Mark Rorick, and I'm a power window repair specialist. I've been involved in power window repair for 15 years. In fact, I started the first mobile power window repair business, and I even franchised my business when it was in six states. So when I tell you about power window repair today, I want you to know that you can A, do this, and B, it's easy. It's not a lot of work. The most important thing to know about power window repair, again, for diagnosis purposes only, is what you can hear, not what you can see. If the motor spins continuously, as this one done, did, then the gear has broken away from the regulator. If you hear it spin for just a short time, and you hear a vine crackling snap, uh, you'll hear a lot of grinding going on, the actual cable has let go from the mount. Okay, and, and the cable is only held in by a little switch on fitting on a cable. If that breaks away, the cable will wind onto the spindle, extra cable, and what you will hear with your ear is the grinding, the binding, and the motor will only spin for a short time. In this regard, the motor spins continuously, so we knew the gear was broken. Another thing that can occur, if you hear the motor run as normal, and it goes down for a time and comes up for a time, the glass has come disassembled uh, from the regulator, and that will require some gluing the, the mounts back on. You can use liquid nail that is set overnight. That will work just fine. The other thing that can happen, and this is very important, again, make sure you have a working window so you know that the window lock is off. And what you want to see is the dome light. If you hit the switch and you see that dome light dim, just a second, then there's a load across the motor, meaning the switch is operable and the motor is not, and you need to replace the motor. Um, the other thing that can occur is you may hear a, um, a ratcheting sound. If you hear a ratcheting sound, th all these gears are built differently. Some of them are attached so that the, the gear itself can never break away from the worm, but the actual plastic here can break free. And you'll hear a that's exactly what it sounds like. And this will only occur at one, it, it will occur actually over and over and over. It will occur here, here, and here. Because this spins around like a clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. So if it happens over and over and over again, as the window comes up and you have to bring it up by your hand, you know that the gear is back. This constitutes a new motor. Uh, you cannot replace the gear. So that's it. First thing you want to do is run another power window so you know the door lock is off kind of stupid, but people do that. And we want to know that the power window door lock is off, and now we hear this motor. You probably can't hear it on film, but there's a motor spinning inside, and the glass isn't moving. With my hands, I can move the windows. So the mechanical link between the glass and the motor is broken. This is a mechanical repair, not an electrical. So we're going to take the door panel off, and we're going to diagnose even further what's going on. It could be a gear on the motor or it could be the regulator. The basic tools is all you need for power window repair. On a Nissan, the, the vehicle we're working on right now, believe it or not, everything's on 10 millimeter boats, so it makes it simple. If you work on a, uh, oh, a town car or a Grand Marquis or a uh, LTD Crown Vic, you may need it covers some rivets. And those things you have to actually drill out with a drill. But this repair is very simple because it's all 10 millimeter boats. So let's start by getting the basic tools out. The only two tools I really used in this was simply a wedge to hold the window up, a screwdriver to pop the panel free, and a 10 millimeter socket, and a 5 16 socket, and a screwdriver bit. That's all I used. I mean, there's very few tools needed to repair a power window. And I think that you will agree that uh, buying your own part, saving your own money, is a great thing. Okay, so if you may encumber some covers over top of screws. Remove anything on the door that you see that may, you know, have a screw behind it. And then remove the screws. It's that simple. So we got the screws out. Looking around the door for anything else that might attach this door. Now we're going to need a little bit of prying to release the door. So let's put a screwdriver in there and let's just pry away. So let's see what we get. Ah! Door panel comes off. Now there's a lip across the glass, and all you have to do is really pull out. Oh! Sound deadening device. 
I just highly skeptical. Okay. And once we get our door removed, you may find several things in the way. Now, it may take some leverage to get that loose. But you push in on the keeper, like that, and you pull. Oh, we're off. Now, if you can get the switch out of the door, it's really good because you can use that to run your window as you work on it. This is called a uh, vapor barrier. And basically, if you remove it and it doesn't go back on, it's not the end of the world. We're warm in South Florida, Central Florida, I should say. And so this stuff comes loose. If you're working in cold environment, it may not. Now, this is called a cable regulator. And again, it attaches the glass to the electric motor. The cable feels intact because I, I, I reach behind it and there's a cable. So we need to know exactly why the, the situation is what it is. We need to remove first the glass from the regulator. You see this hole? This hole gives us access to the screws. So we have a hole to access the screws. And these are 10 millimeter bolts. Pretty simple. This happens to be a 10 millimeter socket that I use. is to make sure we get the glass removed from the regulator. Now, I use a door stop to hold the glass in place. It's just a worn-out door stop, but it works fine. Just simply put it in place and put our door wedge there, and now the glass is out of the situation, and we can work on the regulator. To remove the regulator, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts. All the bolts have been taken out. This is the next step. You want to remove the electrical connection. And again, we have a keeper. We just pull that free. And we drop this down. As this lifts, the cable winds up or down. It doesn't matter. Watch it. See? And it actually rolls on and rolls off the spindle. But we have a broken connection here. And the connection is the motor to the spindle. This is broken. Auto Parts Direct to You sells a complete regulator kit. This kit has the complete regulator and motor already assembled. Makes life easy. So let's open up our kit and let's see what's inside. Ah, 